All right, today we're in chapter two and we're going to take a look at uncertainty in measurement and significant figures. So it starts in section 2.4. And uncertainty in measurement, every time you make a measurement, there's always some degree of uncertainty. And that's because the um, digit that you measure to has to be estimated. The last one has to be estimated. And I'll show you an example of that. So here we have this nail. And it, if you look at it and you're measuring it, it looks like it lies somewhere between 2.8 and 2.9, but you can't just say 2.8 or 2.9. What you have to do is you have to imagine the space between the 0.8 and 0.9, like this, blown up with 10 more marks between it, and you have to estimate that last digit. So if I imagine that blown up, I would look at it and say, well, that's about 2.85. Now, not everybody would see it like that either. So um, I may look at it and say it's 2.87 because my imaginary 10 marks are a little bit different than what these are. So the length of the pen is about 2.85. The certain digits out of those are going to be the 2 and the 8 because we know that it's definitely past the 8 but not quite to the 9. The uncertain digit then is the 5. And we always estimate the last digit when we uh, measure anything. Okay, here are significant figures. This is probably one of the most confusing things, but it's just rules. Just memorize the rules. So the first one we're going to talk about are non-zero integers. These are always significant. So in this case, 3,456, there are four sig figs, or significant figures. All four of them are significant. There's three classes of zeros. We have leading zeros. Leading zeros that precede Non-zero digits are never significant. They're just placeholders. So in this example, there's only two sig figs, the four and the eight. Captive zeros, I don't call them captive, I call them trapped. So trapped zeros are between two non-zero digits and these are always significant. So in 16.07, the zero is significant because it's trapped between two non-zero numbers. Then you have trailing zeros. And these are zeros at the right end of a number, and sometimes they're significant and sometimes they're not. So 9.300. These two are following the decimal point, and they're following a non-zero digit, so they are significant. So there's four. One, two, three, four. This number, you don't see the decimal point, so the one and the five are the only two significant figures in this number. The zero is just a placeholder. Exact numbers have an infinite number of sig figs. Anytime that we use a conversion factor, it has an infinite number because we're saying that one inch is 2.54 centimeters exactly. Another example is a counting number. So anytime you count numbers, count pencils, count people, whatever it is, they're always significant. Every one of them are significant, so we say it's infinite because it wouldn't matter how many places past the decimal point that I would go to, I would only have just the nine pencils. All right, now let's look at it in scientific notation. One of the things I want to bring out, this decimal point that you see right here automatically makes these two zeros significant. So in this number, 300 decimal point, there are three sig figs. If I write this number in scientific notation, I need to show that there are three significant figures. So here in this example, there are three, 3.00. When you put something in scientific notation, everything in front of the times 10 is significant. This helps us to be able to see really small numbers or really large numbers and um, know how many sig figs they have right away too. All right, now we're gonna look at the rounding off rules when it comes to sig figs. The rules for rounding off in sig figs are just the same as they are in math class. Remember that if the digit to be removed is less than 5, it stays the same. And in this example, we have 5.64, and we're going to round that to 5.6. Um, if you look here, this is the position we look at. It's less than 5, so we're going to leave this number the same. Um, if the digit is greater than 5, we're going to round it up. So if we want two sig figs, it would be one, two sig figs. We look at this position, it's greater than 5, so we round the 6 to the 7, just like we do in math class. 3.861 rounds to 3.9 if I want two sig figs. If I want two, it's going to be these two right here. I look at this position, it's 5 or larger, so I'm going to round the 8 to a 9. 
All right. And it calculations, we're going to carry digits all the way through. You're never going to round in the middle of a calculation. Okay. For example, for multiplication or division, the number of sig figs is the, in the answer can only have as many sig figs as your least significant question, part of the question. So if we look at this example, there are a different set of rules for multiplication and division than there are for addition and subtraction when it comes to significant figures. So for multiplication and division, our answer can only have as many significant figures as the least number of significant figures in our problem. So if we look at this problem, 3.142 has four sig figs. 5.5 .5 has two sig figs. So I put that in my calculator, and what I come up with exactly, the numbers, all of the numbers on display, 7.381. I can only keep two in my answer because it's the least number of sig figs in the problem. So I'm going to keep these two. I look at this one. Is it five or larger? Yes. So I'm going to round up and you get 7.4. There's another rule for addition and subtraction. In addition and subtraction, you can only keep as many sig figs as I'm sorry, the many, as many places past the decimal as the least number past the decimal in your problem. So we look at this one, we have three places past the decimal. This one, we have two places past the decimal. I can only keep two places past the decimal because it's the least number past the decimal point. So 31.275 is what I have. I can only keep these two places past the decimal point. I look at the five. It's five or larger, so I'm going to round the seven up to an eight, so there's our correct answer, 31.28. All right, let's look at this example real quick, and we'll finish up the lecture for today. So these are two graduated cylinders, and we have water in them, and we're going to calculate the total volume. So when we look at the example that we're looking at, you always want to read the bottom edge of the meniscus. This dip right here is called the meniscus. We read the bottom edge. So when I look at this, I look at it as 2.2468. Uh, probably I need to estimate this place right here. I'm going to say 2.81. When I look over here at this meniscus, this is a finer tuned graduated cylinder. So I have 0.22468, and I don't see anything past the 8 here. So what I have on that one is 2, or it's 0.280. I'm going to add those together. Now I'm adding, so the rule says that I can only keep the number of places past the decimal that has the least number past the decimal. I have two here, I have three here, so I can only keep two in my answer. So I can only keep these two positions. And the way I estimated it, um, I look at this position and say it's a zero, so I'm gonna leave this as a nine. And my final answer is going to be a total of 3.09 milliliters.